and welcome back now this week we're going to be looking at the max 7219 matrix display which you can see at the back there displaying some messages and the time and whatnot here's my esp32 controller that's almost dead that's why i'm using an ftdi at the moment and yeah i nearly blew it up actually uh, now this thing's far too long this one at the back it's 0.9 meters so i've got to um, put a little tiny test one on that will fit so uh, what I'm going to do, this one here, I'm going to put this on so we can see what's going on onto my workbench. Now just a quick shout out for PCB Way, especially for beginners who perhaps have never done this before. It really is simple once you get your head around it. Create your PCB design in your favourite CAD program, KeyCAD or something like that. And then get your Gerber files ready and upload them when you click on this button here. Now the dimensions are not important. Just put 100 by 100 here. Put how many you want here. Remember it, $5 for 10 pieces. So put in 10 and then click the quote now button. But I want to talk to you about something else this week. And that's about, are you really going to solder SMT components? Because they will do it for you for a very reasonable sum of $30. But that includes your shipping. So you sort of get it back, don't you? Let's have a look what that means. Now this is the page you end up on when you specify how you want your board to be assembled, okay? And behind my head you can see that sign there, look, free shipping with this PC assembly, so bear that in mind. Now here you say, how am I going to source the components? And the best way is to let PCB Way source them for you. You just give them a list of the components you want in a standard you know, spreadsheet format. So you say, I want these capacitors of this value and this size. So for example, you might say, I want a 100 nanofarad capacitor, 0603, and that's capacitor 1. And then capacitor 2 is something else and so on. You just give them the entire list, they'll go away and find them, and believe me, components are cheap in China, so you'll you'll be pleasantly surprised at the cost. Now, having done all that, you specify down here um, whether you want through-hole components, uh, which side of the board you want soldered, either top, bottom, or both, and they'll just do the whole thing and send it back to you. It really is a nice way of getting a prototype to you back very quickly without having to get the soldering iron out. So, what are you waiting for? Have a go at PCB Way and try them out now. Right, I've got the little one connected now, as you can see above my head, this this strip, and there are eight individual modules. Let's call them modules. Let's it's an eight by eight array. Look, you can see down the bottom here, you can see where they're they're split like this. I'll take one out in a minute and, and show you. But there are two versions, and it's important really that you get the right one if you're going to do this sort of thing. Years and years and years and years ago, I bought the one that you can see at the back here. Uh, let me show you this and this was basically the wrong one so as you can see i've got um four modules here but look the chips are exposed at the side and to get them working without huge gaps in the middle um i've had to well, wire it up like this it's all a, it was a bit of a disaster really but still at the time quite fun getting anything working on it but these are not the ones you want obviously the the output from one side of these chips, so this is the input, there's the output, and that has to feed in to the input of this one. Right? Now you could say, well, why don't you just turn them around so that plugs directly into there? Well, yeah, you could do that, but then you'd have a massive gap where this chip is, right? Uh, Max 7219, you don't want that. So they're not the ones to get, although I guess... well. If you wanted to buy them and wire them up like that, well, up to you. But obviously, I, th I think it's pretty clear that this arrangement is a much better way of doing things, yes? Now, let me just uh, take one of these off so I can show you the chip underneath. So here's the individual 64 LED module, okay, with um, a few pins poking out. Just be careful you don't bend these. They're quite thin little leads, not like the Arduino ones. And underneath... You've got a Max 7219 that controls all those 64 LEDs all wired up to here. And the input um, is wired up to the chip and the chip then forwards on the data to the next chip. Um, so the clock and what have we got here? So we've got clock and CS. They're just passed straight through. D out comes from the chip and D in goes into the chip. So you've got like a type of buffer in there. And then ground and VCC. Now, for a little tiny run like this one here, powering it up from the five volts on the Arduino or my well, my USB hub really is not an issue. Let me 
plug this one back in again and we'll talk through talk it through go it says and go we will right okay so what this strip is now to the software and it's not my software i'm here really to promote a library that i had no hand in writing whatsoever um it, the, the strip of leds to the software just looks like one big continuous bank of leds okay even though there's 64 in each of these eight by eight modules now that was all right and I, th and I could write my own software for that or use a, a little tiny library that just allowed all those leds to be accessed in one go in fact i did a, a video or two i believe about oh must be six years ago now on how to use these just in a very simple format and i thought you know what i could i could put lots of these together and have something useful being displayed and so i bought lots of them found then that you must buy them all at one go because sometimes these modules that you see are not the same so if you buy some from different suppliers you'll find that the height is either you know minusculely different or the colors a little bit off so anyway luckily i had enough and i managed to get my big long strip of things that, are, that strip you can see right at the top now which is the prototype for this entire project and i thought i can do something useful with that and that big long strip at the top of this screen sat in my workshop well first it sat in the in the garage that was my workshop then it sat in my custom workshop in the other house then it sat on the windowsill in this one i mean it must be five years that it sat there 0 0.9 meters it is and i always thought it'd be great to have this long strip of stuff i don't know telling me how many subscribers i had or something on youtube or getting some data from google never happened i don't know why it's one of those projects that sort of you just run out of steam on you know eventually you build the hardware and you think do you know what i've got to write the software now and i, I sort of just left it there because i didn't have a I didn't have a use for it now i have and the use that i'm i'm using as an excuse to build it now is that um i'm i talk to sometimes people in china obviously um and i need to know what time it is i've sent them messages before now and it's been like 10 o'clock at night or 11 o'clock at night there and they go okay we'll we'll deal with this in the morning but i'm i'm in bed now actually I'm like, oh my goodness i forgot about the time difference that's bad enough but my daughter and her family live in australia yeah new south wales and uh, the difference there at the moment is um 11 hours they're 11 hours ahead so you don't want to start sending their messages at three o'clock in the morning yeah <laughs> so I thought I really need to know what the time is so I'm going to build a world clock so I can have UK time China time and Oz time okay because they're the three three times that I really know obviously you could put any times on here but uh, they're the three that I wanted and I thought okay if I'm going to do that what else can I do I could put um, what day of the week it is because believe me when you're working from home like I am every day is pretty much the same you go so no Wednesday I've gone through entire days well, I'm, I'm convinced it's a Tuesday, and in fact, it's a Thursday or whatever. Yeah, I mean, it's just ridiculous. And isn't it weird, in a non-technical manner now, this is really weird, how psychologically a Tuesday feels compared to, say, a Thursday or a Monday. It really is odd. Anyway, I've gone through whole days like that. So this now is going to display the day of the week, um, the time of the day in the sense that not, not 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, it will display that as well. But like, is it morning? Is it lunchtime? Is it afternoon? Is it evening? Because I saw something once in Banggood. It said for old people with dementia. Mm, no, they weren't thinking of me. No, no, no. How rude. Um, where they display the day of the week and if it's afternoon, morning or whatever. And I thought, well, that's useful. Yeah, at least that you can keep track of the days. So I thought, OK, that's two things I want now then. The date, the time, the day. Great. OK, what else can I do? And I thought, I know. I can display some messages from my phone. So I can type something into my phone to say, I must remember to do this today. Type it in and it comes up on that really long display um, to remind me to do it. And I haven't got the software um, to do that from my phone yet because it's one of those <laughs> laborious things where you've got to write some server pages and I haven't got there yet, but I will do. But in the meantime, I thought I'd tell you guys, as you're patiently she watching this and thinking, what is he trying to show us down here? Um, this particular library. Now, the library was written by a chap called Marco Coley. Could be Collie, Coley. And he's based, funnily enough, it's a small world. 
he's based in Australia, New South Wales. Funny that, isn't it, where my daughter lives? And because uh, I asked him a question about this, about his wonderful and extensively documented libraries that control this. If you, to be quite honest, if you want to control a Max 7219 strip like this, I think this is the library. Um, you can even have, incidentally, a dual height display. So one of these on top of another one to give you big fonts or little fonts, but, you know, moving it about. And uh, I thought, well, OK, that's one step too far. I'm not building any more hardware, but it, it would even do that. But the best thing it gives me, from my point of view, is that you can split this this whole strip up here into what he calls zones. OK, so you can say, right, I want three of these modules to be one zone, the next three to be another zone and the final two over there to be another zone, independent zone. And then you can write to those zones entirely independently. And then you can say, actually, I just want to make it one big zone now. So if we quickly try and follow the animation, what's going on here, I'll explain it. So first of all, it starts off with one zone. There we are, look, and that is zone zero. All of that from left to right that you're seeing scrolling is all zone zero. Then it splits into three zones, zero, one, and two. And then it puts something into the zone one middle bit and animates it. So you can have an updated, well, in my case, it's going to be a time uh, update and then we revert again to one big zone where I can put messages so that's that's my goal if you like in in using this particular library uh, the problem I had and that I spoke to Marco about was that I initially said I want one zone now I want three zones now I want one zone and whilst it worked it rapidly ran out of memory you could see by just looking at the free memory in my code Every time it did an iteration, it, it would swallow another 150 bytes of data or something. I thought, that can't be right. What's going on? And so Marco clarified that, in fact, when you set this going, we'll have a very brief look at the code in a minute. When you set this all up, you go, the maximum number of zones that I'll ever need is X, and in my case, three. Now, there should be uh, non-overlapping zones, but if you want three zones and you've split them up accordingly, and then you suddenly say, well, now I don't want three zones, I just want one. What do you do with, with the two that you don't want? So what I've said is zone zero is the whole thing from, from module zero to module seven at the end. And then the other two zones are module zero to module zero. That's it. And you must not use those. Obviously, you can't overlap the memory as strange things will happen. And that works absolutely fine. Zero memory loss, no memory leaks, and that's great. Now, I did say that this is running on an ESP32 because I want this to act as a, a server to um, receive pages so for my messages that I can put on here. And um, yeah, it'd be connected up to my Wi-Fi and I just happen to have an ESP32 lying about. But unfortunately, I very nearly blew it up because whilst I was doing all this on this little five volt thing that's fine but what happens then when i got my 0.9 meter strip how much current do you think that takes when it's sort of all going and what's the maximum amount of current it could ever take with all the leds on and the answer is about 1.9 amps which is far too much for my usb hub and you don't want to put it through here anyway so i've had to do some wiring behind the scenes to put the five volts um, along the strip, you know, with a, a thicker wire to make sure that the whole strip is powered, not via each individual module going across, but by this thick wire leapfrogging frogging its way down the strip. And also I've got corruption at the end, so at this end here on the long one, not this little tiny one, there's corruption of some of the characters down here. And uh, Marco said, chances are you got the same problem with the data and the clock that I mentioned earlier. Try putting a wire down to there as well. Every four of these units, just tag a little wire across. So it's got more of a direct path. So I did that and all seems to be well. So having, if you like, proved that that bit would work, that's when I continued on to the main module. OK, let's have a look at the um, the library I'm talking about then over here. So here's the library. Um, he calls it Magic Designs, and there he is, Marco Coley in Sydney, New South Wales, in Australia. 
Now, this particular library, MD Parola, um, controls an underlying library that he wrote called MD Max 72XX. I guess XX being that not only can it control the 7219, presumably I mean, it can control others, but I haven't gone down that road because I've only got the 7219 here. And he gives many, many examples, and the documentation has to be seen to be believed for this particular library. It goes into the nth detail on the uh, the wiki. So this is the, the wiki um, homepage, if you like, for the Parola library, and it describes, well, everything you'd ever want to know, including the multi-zone displays, which is what made me even look at this library to begin with. So if there's anything you ever want to know, this is where you need to read it. And I guess it does take a little bit of getting used to and reading um, to make the best of it. I mean, my needs, to be quite honest, are quite simple. Very simple, in fact. Just displaying three time zones uh, the day of the week um, and some reminder messages if there are any. So I don't think I'm going to be exploiting this particular library to the full by any means. But at least it can do stuff um, in the future, perhaps that I need it to do. Now, as the library uh, on GitHub here shows in a quick summary what it can do, you can justify the text left, right or center for each individual zone or as the strip um, as a whole. Um, you can control the speed of the animations and the animations are plentiful. Again, I'm scrolling in from the left, from the right, up, down, diagonal, left, right, up, down, in and out, right? This So there's lots of... Uh, possibilities there to make your display a little bit more interesting um what else oh yes as it says here look support for double height displays yeah which i haven't gone down the road it'd be nice to try that perhaps but no i think i've i've had this particular display now long enough sitting there waiting to be used without me building even more hardware um you can mix text and graphics on the same display which i haven't done i must admit um, he, I think he does it in one of his examples. The examples, by the way, the example um, .eno files that he adds into his uh, library here, there, there's lots of them, lots of them, and you really have to sort of dig down deep and follow them through. They are not four-line examples. Let me just, let's just have a look at one, see what I mean. So here's one, it goes, sets some things up. There's all the different types of animation you can have. Um, and then it just displays well so, so I'm not even going to go through it it's just it's quite involved as you can see but it I mean it's simple enough once you get your head around it but there's so much here it's not a it's not a four line bit of code is it so you do have to look into that animation uh, example there to make the most of it okay right I think I've given you a taste of what this MD Parola library can do on these displays and um, they can provide some, you know, some retro feel to the displays. I mean, these days everybody's using screens, but this is a nice big display, isn't it? I'm going to put this right over there in my workshop because I can see that far away, even with my eyes, and uh, have all sorts of things come up on it. Over the over a course of time, I expect I'll develop this and add more capability. And when I have it all controllable via my phone, um, I will show you again exactly the finished product but it's it's not um it's not exactly rocket science and you've seen a sort of a similar application where i'm using my phone to, to control that barrel pond controller as well so it's it's um a path well trodden if not by me by several others but yeah okay done and dusted um if you're watching this over the festive period a very happy christmas to you and uh uh a good slide into the new year, as the Germans might say. <laughs> yes, I think it doesn't translate well at all, does it? No. And I'll see you in 2023. I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting. There are plenty more videos to choose and a couple are shown below. And if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, just click on my picture below and enjoy the rest of the videos. Thanks for watching.